So you want to self-host Next.js? Well, we have a couple of options these days to do that. And it's actually a much smoother experience than in the past. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy Next.js with Docploy to a VPS. And as you'll see, it's actually a great experience these days. So I showed you in another video how to do it with Coolify. A lot of you like that video. So let's also talk about the alternative you have, Docploy. I would say Docploy and Coolify are, are now two popular options uh, to do this in a very smooth manner. They have some subtle differences, but overall I would say they are both really good. And they both make hosting Next.js on a VPS a, a very realistic option. So I'm really happy to see these tools grow in the ecosystem. So we're gonna deploy it to a VPS. So we will need a VPS. And I've actually really enjoyed using hosting or they are today's sponsor. And the reason is actually that they have these VPS templates out of the box. So they already have a Docploy VPS template. They also have a Coolify VPS template. They even have an Olama VPS template. So if you want to self-host AI models, that's also possible these days. But they are on the cutting edge as well. So they know what you're doing if, you, if you're using Docploy, right? So it's not like we're doing something weird on our VPS. This is already something that they are configured for. Okay, so we need a Next.js app. So I have a very simple Next.js app here. Um, it's very basic. We just have uh, an API route, a server action, and one, uh, let's take a look, one homepage, okay? So I added a server action and a route handler so we can see if these uh, features in the Next.js app router still work on the VPS, right? So if I click on this button, it's going to fetch data from a server action. If I click on that button, it's gonna fetch data from a route handler. So let's see if we can deploy to the VPS and then we will double check if these features still work, okay? Okay, so where do we start? We have the Next.js app here locally. Well, I would start by just creating a GitHub repository. So I'm actually just gonna call this uh, Next.js app. Uh, I will just keep it private and just create a repository. Then I will just, then I will actually just add all the changes first and then I will commit and push to GitHub, okay? So now we will have our app here on GitHub and from here we can take it to the VPS, okay? So let me actually close this and this as well. So now we need a VPS so we can actually uh, get Docploy up and running and then pull in our app. So I'm gonna use Hostinger, like I said, uh, I had a great time using Hostinger. You can find a link in the description, by the way. So I'm gonna use the KVM2 VPS plan here. These resources should be enough for uh, Docploy. But if you do want a beefier server, that's also possible. Maybe you wanna host multiple Next.js apps. And as you'll see, we can even do databases and more complex Docker apps as well. So um, you can take the plan that you think suits you best. Now I'm gonna use the KVM2 plan here. Now, if you're going to use hosting or make sure to use my coupon code, which is uppercase byte grad, right? So you can add it right here. And then if you apply it, you will get a good price, right? So make sure you use my coupon code byte grad. You can find a link in the description as well. Okay. So for server location, I think they're just picking the one that's closest to you. All right. So here for operating system, we can go with a plain Ubuntu install. However, like I said, they have Docploy here as a template, right? Docploy. There we go. Actually, they also have Coolify. So just to show you Coolify as well, right here. If you're hosting uh, uh, AI models, they have Olama here as well with Open Web UI. I'm gonna go with the Docploy install here. But if you don't, but if you do want to install Docploy yourself, they show you the commands here on the website themselves. But I have to say, it's much easier with a template. Uh, it's like, so I will just confirm here and I will continue with paying for the VPS. All right, so after paying, we can go through the setup here. Sure, I'll take the free scanner. And here we can set up a password for our VPS. You will need this if you directly want to log into your VPS. However, as you'll see with Docploy, we don't need to do much like that ourselves. We can do a lot of it from the admin panel in Docploy. I will still set up a password here. Okay, so I have a password. Um, you can just put that somewhere. Make sure you don't show it to anyone else. We'll continue here. Okay, finish setup. And then it's going to provision the resource. And so I will see you back in a second. All right. And after a couple of minutes, it is ready for us. And we can immediately access our VPS by SSHing into it. However, as you'll see with Docploy, we can do a lot of it from the Docploy panel itself. All right. So here in Hostinger, you can see now we have um, the overview with all of our uh, VPS information. And they give us some information, by the way. So if you want to read up on that, on how to do it in Hostinger. But, but we can also just go to the pan manage panel and see... Uh, what's going on here. Let's continue to the site. And here we have our Docploy panel, right? Our dashboard here. And we need to create like an admin user. So let's quickly uh, do that. Make sure you don't forget your password. Uh, people seem to forget it often for uh, <laughs> this type of uh, account. Let's register here. And here we go. So here we are now inside the dashboard running on our VPS. So 
I like to start off by actually getting a proper domain name for our uh, admin panel here. So you can go to your DNS provider and actually hosting or provides domains as well. So I can go to the main menu here and here under uh, domains, I have all my domains that I registered. So I already have this bitegradcourses.com uh, domain, right? So I, I run an e-learning website, so uh, this domain makes sense to me. Um, so here under DNS, I can specify this A record. So I will take actually the admin. So it will be like admin.bitegradcourses.com. That will be my uh, web panel dashboard. So here under web server, we can set things up. However, we first need to get the actual IP on which it is running here. So it, Dogplay automatically uh, recognizes that and it gives us the server IP here. That So it so we want the admin to point to that. Okay, I'm gonna add the records. Okay, successfully created. So now if I go to bytegradcourses.com, Okay, so here, if I continue to cite, okay, now if you try going there right now, you won't see anything yet. So in here, we also need to specify that. So here we have to say it will be admin.bytegradcourses.com, um, your email, certificate provider, let's encrypt, and I will save here. Okay, domain assigned. So now it may take a couple seconds or so, but now if I go here um, and I will just uh, continue here, you can see now I am using admin.bytegradcourses.com and the HTTPS, it may take a couple more seconds. Yeah, so if you try again after a couple seconds, you can see that also we have HTTPS now for the admin dashboard, right? So this is not what our end users would see. This is just for us so we can log in in a nice, uh, and now I can log in again with my credentials. All right, so here we are now back in the dashboard. What next? Well, now we actually wanna add our GitHub uh, project here, right? So I will create a project. This is just like a, container for anything you may be building could also be a database this is just uh like what are we, we because you could have an app you could have a database you can have multiple things for the same project right so what could we do here i'll just call this my first project and create the project right so then this is our project uh this is the project level so then we can add an application a database or some kind of docker compose setup however we are only going to use one application here and we will just call this uh my first app and I will leave the default. Okay, so now we have this app service. Let's go there. All right, so here's where we're gonna configure things for our actual Next.js app, but it does need to, so we wanna pull it, of course, from GitHub into Dogploy here. And actually you can use other providers, of course, but uh, in this case, we are going to use GitHub. And so we do need to uh, connect our GitHub account first. So let's go to settings here. And here I'm gonna pick GitHub and I will cr create a GitHub app. Okay, so it gives me this name. And actually I'm not sure why, but it's, it's, it keeps saying that the name is already taken. So I'm just gonna add some gibberish. Okay, so now it's uh, connected. Okay, let's go back to our project here. All right, so then we can click on this symbol here. And now I can pick uh, which repositories it should have access to. You can have all everything. However, I like to be a little bit selective. So I call this Next.js app. So that's the repository I will give it access to. Okay, so now our actual repo should be connected so now if we go back to our app here you can see we now have some other options we can pick the github account okay which repository well we only connected one so that should be the one okay the branch will just be the main branch and everything else i will leave the default i will save here okay so now we have connected everything but as we can see there are no deployments yet so if we go to general here we can actually click on deploy, which downloads the source code and also starts building the app. Uh, and by the way, quick tip, if your Next.js app, right? So what they will do under the hood is npm run build, which will build a Next.js app. Now a Next.js app, by default, if you have the starter template, the standard starter template, will actually fail the build if you have even one TypeScript error. If your deployment isn't working, make sure to check out the logs as well. So they will show you the logs. So that I will just deploy for now, right? So um, it's now uh, running, right? So we can actually view the, here on the deployments, we can now also view the logs. If you scroll up a little bit, you can see it's cloning that repo. So it's getting the code and then it's gonna run an NPM run build of our Next.js app. Yeah, so here you can see now it's creating an optimized production build. So one of the part, one of the steps in there is checking the validity of types. And actually it will fill the build if even one type is not, uh, if, if you have a red squiggly line, basically it will actually fill the build. This has tripped me up sometimes actually when uh, when some kind of build fails, it's, it's often that. So now, we get the nice green check mark, so let's check it out. So this was a deployment, but how, how do we know where can we see it now? Uh, so you, you will not be able to just use the, the root domain. This will not work yet. Well, let's actually set up our 
actual domain that we want to use for the app itself, which will just be the root uh, bytegradcourses.com in my case. So I will go one more time here. In this time, I will create an alias record for the root, right? And this will just point to, should point to the IP address of the VPS, right? And since we changed it now, if you want to see it, you can go to web server here, and here you have the server IP again, okay? So you can just put it there. So this is for the root in my case, and I'm going to add the record, okay? So DNS record created successfully. Okay, so now on this side, I do have to change it as well. So I need to let uh, Dogploy know that when there's an incoming request to that IP address, well, that it should be for my Next.js app. Okay, so here the domain is going to be, well, my root domain, bytegradcourses.com, uh, container ports. I believe we should just leave it like that because uh, Next.js is running internally on port 3000, so probably best to leave it like that. I will automatically provision SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt. Okay, so let's uh, see what happens. I'm going to create a domain. Okay, and now if I go to that domain, let's see. Okay, so it may take a couple seconds. I will just uh, continue for now. All right, so here we have our app. And actually, it may take some time, so I'm just going to continue here. Can we fetch data with server action? Yes, we can. Can we fetch data with our route, route handler? Yes, we still can. So all of the Next.js features in this app are still working. So you can see how easy it was to actually get the Dogploy working on a VPS. We have many more options here. So what if you actually make a change? We can have auto-deploy. So if I make a change and push to GitHub, we want to automatically deploy again. Or if you want to do it manually, you just click the button. We can reload the app itself, so it will not fetch the latest code. We can reload the application, it's not gonna build. We can build the application, in that case, it's not gonna grab the code anymore. We can stop. We have a bunch of logs here for when our app is actually running. So you can see, for example, if there's an incoming request, we can monitor our app. So you can see uh, some information about that here as well. And we have an advanced tab, so you can specify pretty much anything you would want for an app on a VPS right here. So that's all at the app level. Here in the dashboard level itself, we also can see some data. So we have traffic here, we have Docker here, web server. So anything about the web server itself, remote servers, users, an AI tab. Uh, so that's really interesting if you're doing anything with AI. And again, you can even use Hostinger's VPS with Olama to host the AI models in case you prefer that. But um, this is really interesting as well. And again, we could try to add uh, for example, a database to this project as well, right? So then we could connect it to our app and set that up as well. But now we already have a full stack Next.js application on a VPS hosted by Hostinger. So if you're looking for a VPS, definitely check out Hostinger. You can find a link in the description. Make sure to use ByteGrad and all uppercase as your coupon code. And then I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Hostinger for sponsoring the video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.